Hello, welcome to Bourbon and Badges, the podcast, uh, season five, underway, and I am your host, one of them, the Rodnator, and I'm here with Slow Ride and Hound Dog. Guys, how are we doing today? Man, what a show we have. Yes, we're doing. I'm going to talk all night like this right here. Uh, so we are underway. We're getting, uh, 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 hell, we're more than halfway through the season, aren't we? I mean, this no, is... I why do you keep man. pushing it? Rod Nader keeps putting... He's, I... ready, to get, he's ready to close this out. I thought no, I was I'm saying, just man. saying, it's just going by so quickly, you know? I, I was mean, going to say, man, we're halfway through the episode, so we just started. We're going no, I mean, the season, the season, the <laughs> season. You know, like season. season five, episode five, you're like, well, we're about done, aren't we? No, this is this is more like episode nine, I believe, guys, or something like that. I'm not sure if my stats are right. Oh, Anyway, we're, we're like... coming to you from Studio 77, and uh, we are the voice of the uncommon people. That's right. Yep. So uncommon. You have Most it. uncommon people. Yep. Yep. Got a lot of, we're, I, go ahead. ahead. We're, we're the place you come to 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 get a police perspective on uh, current events, common sense, and anything else we want to talk about. It's our show. Yep. That's a lot of. That's what the uh, a lot of people are lacking these days is common sense. Oh, that man. is key. Logic, common sense. And, well, you know, people, y'all agree with me on this. You know, people always ask me, "Was it you know, what's take to make a good cop? Common sense. Ninety percent yeah. is common sense. Ten percent knowing the law." Right. I, I, I'll go one further. To be a successful human being, you need to have common sense. Yeah. Just All common right. sense. So right now you're saying the hound dog and I don't have common sense. I didn't say that. You guys are very successful. Look at you guys. <laughs> well, 60 years, you. How, how 60 years of law enforcement be? between you two fuckers. You know, yeah, you guys are successful. You made it. Oh, yeah. You made it to the other side. Yeah. yeah. It's called we but run fast. There you go. So <laughs> today's did, show, we uh, we're coming to this is an <laughs> afternoon show. I don't know if uh, that yeah. people give a crap about that, but. Afternoon shows are kind of nice. I'm kind of wide awake, ready to go. Well, yeah. and, uh, I'm kind of the, I'm kind of the opposite. I'm wondering. I'm, I'm just not in the mood. I don't know. The mindset at night's better for me. I think. I don't know because I'll probably had a few drinks already before we get on the podcast. And also, you want to be cutting grass and getting bit by spiders. So we understand oh, yeah. what you want to be. You well, want to be riding your mower. Well, plus he's probably only been up about ten or fifteen minutes anyway. I am immune yeah. to every about everything up here now, man. I've got spider venom in me, wasp, hornet venom in me. He said in me. I think I'd be a superhero by now. <laughs> I think that's what anyway. happened to Spider Man. He got bit by a spider. <laughs> oh, that is. You're exactly right. Yeah. We're going to turn into like a. Oh, let me tell you something funny right quick. Yeah. Totally off the cuff. You know, we had our first frost up here in the mountain last night. So I went outside after dark to put the plants up on on the front porch that's covered. So the frost wouldn't get it. Right. I went to move one of the ferns off its hanger. And a freaking bird flew out of the fern and landed on my head. <laughs> no, sure. really. Oh, yeah. Y'all heard me. You might not know what it was, but y'all heard me. Did you scream? Wow. My first thought was bat. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. But it was, it was a little, um, little sparrow because it flew off my head and flew on the, hung on the screen. And kind now, of did it have like, a nest Had a nest in there or was it just sitting there? Yeah, I guess it's, it was just overnight in there, man, like a little Cause, Airbnb. Because sometimes on, the, you know, on, the, on, uh, on a porch back in the day on my other house, you know, birds would make nests in those powder, those flower plants hanging from on yeah. the front porch. Yeah, no, you see little eggs in there and shit. Yeah. You know, yeah, I take it. Yeah. I take this down too too many times and water it. Or if it starts raining, I'll take yeah. the ferns down and cause it kind of under a yeah. rain. Yeah, yeah. rain get them. So yeah, no nests, but yeah, man, everything he was over ninety there, and uh, it was just as surprised as I was. You said he was Airbnb, and that's funny. I, I, yeah, that, that is funny. That went right by me. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah. so today's show, we got a lot of things we're going to talk about. We might touch on some things uh, currently going on. Uh, big news: uh, Gaza Strip, Israel's on fire now. Um, they're yeah, going God's at it. country. You don't mess with God, people. Yeah. No, it's all started no, there, and it's all going to end there. And so don't mess with them. But no, no, uh, Israel's declared war for the first time since 1973, the Yom Kippur War. So we'll wow. talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, some bad things, of course. I'm going to talk about a homicide in New York. Did you guys hear about the stabbing in Brooklyn? Yep, and sure the mass is. shooting they like to go into as well. So there you we go. got a lot of there stuff. There. But in order to do that, we have to wet our whistles. <laughs> yes, absolutely. All right, and uh, the dun, 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 wild turkey one hundred and one is going to okay, be sampled pour, today. That pour didn't come at the right time. You're showing the bottle and the pour. It going. sounds great though, but yeah, <laughs> slow's pouring. I'm not pouring yet. I don't have a cork either, so I'm going to be yeah. screw topping this one. Off. Oh, wait a minute. Squeak, 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 squeak. <laughs> and uh, then the porn. There you go. 
So we're going to do Wild Turkey 101. Yep. There you go. I appreciate that. poured mine to let it uh, kind of air out a little bit. There you go. I got the uh, I got the cheat sheet up and we're ready to roll. Um, let me just give you a little bit of background. Classification straight bourbon, of course. The company is the Compari Group. That's C-A-M-P-A-R-I Group. Distillery, of course, is Wild Turkey. And the proof is 101, which will give it about a 50.5 alcohol by volume. And uh, its mash bill is 75% corn. Um, scratch that. 75, yeah, 75% corn, 13% rye, 12% malted barley, which I think we're going to find a little bit strange because it, it's pretty uh, potent smelling. And it's got a yellow gold hue, and the price point is right at $25, so not a bad price point. It is very hueish. Yeah. Yeah. It's hueish A lot of pepper on the nose. <clears throat> It's yeah, and ethanol. Yeah, for some reason, for some reason that yet again, I can't smell nothing but ethanol. That's all I. That's right. Well, well, you probably can. It's one hundred and one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am getting a bit yeah. on the nose. Yeah. A lot of pepper it's gonna, though. It's gonna have yeah. a little. It's gonna have a little kick to it. You know, you get run in your freak, run in your freaking car. You know. I, I wish I could pick up the the scent that they the other professionals say it has. Getting but... a bouquet of rosary beads and rosary beads. <laughs> What the hell does rosary beads smell like? Buttered popcorn a... and uh, some green what? beans. Wait a minute, rosary beads smell like buttery popcorn? No, oh I get the, 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 both of them, buttered popcorn, rosary beads, and green beans as well. Folks, <laughs> attention folks, Slow's been drinking before the show. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, all they right, they the kept all kind of crazy stuff. No green beans. All right, here's the cheat sheet. The nose, you're going to smell scents of vanilla, baking spices, and rye grain. If you really take a deep inhale, you're going to get some toasted oak, toffee with a T, and a punch of ethanol. There you go. No, um, get hit slap in the face with ethanol. It's in the rock of back. Yeah. You're going to get some yeah. ethanol in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> all right. I'm going yeah. in. Yeah, and so, that's carried all the way from the fermentation all the way through the whole process to get that ethanol. Yeah, because every one grain of ethanol they make, Ooh. they make one grain of sugar, and they're after the sugar. And the ethanol, course, is what we're after, the buzz. Oh, I got Man, you. Yeah, yeah. That is, that is potent. That's pretty stout. <laughs> it's potent. Yeah. Ooh, for, for an afternoon, that's pretty stout. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's finish this bottle, go out and enjoy the day. <laughs> yeah, let me that's get right. the car and go. <laughs> It'll make us better people. <laughs> so on the palate, you can immediately notice a light corn oil presence, which sets the stage for a nice mouthfeel. Their word, not mine. I would never use the word mouthfeel. <laughs> this is layered with a healthy dose. If you did, you'd probably become more popular. <laughs> <laughs> with who, though? <laughs> layered with a healthy dose of rice spice, baking spices, sharp oak, along with a gentle layer of vanilla and toasted oak. While the palate isn't overly complex, it provides a really good reminder that if you focus on the fundamentals, you can still provide a solid experience for the drinker. So they're saying it's a pretty good punch. Yeah. Now, the finish... Um, again, they're talking about the rye, that rye spice that jumps out front and it's is joined dry. by, yeah, joined by a very combination dry. of muted vanilla and oak. I, I still just get the, the rice and the, and the, um, the punch. I don't, it's overriding the vanilla and the oak for me. I don't know. You guys. I think we said before, I think the same guys are right. The notes, right. Uh, Hallmark. Green card. I believe it. It's true. I believe it. <laughs> listen, to, listen to this one. The I sweetness believe. of the vanilla quickly fades, leaving a spicy dark oak in its wake. <laughs> that is that is poetic. The spice lingers and generally trails off. Ooh, that's it. Listen to that. The spice lingers and then gently trails off. Like you're looking, like you're looking into does. the distance. You know, I think I've heard Rod's voice on the Hallmark Channel before. <laughs> Not that I've ever watched the Hallmark Channel. Oh, you well, just outed yourself. You, you just outed yourself. <laughs> yeah, oh. You just outed you yourself. You know, this thing about Christmas coming up, man. Christmas, Hallmark. Mark the Hallmark. date. How did came out of the closet today? <laughs> he, he's doing that to make Mama happy is what he's doing. There you go. Yeah. Bobby's in the room, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, I'll start and end the same way. You know. You, you, you know. Somebody, Kid can gonna, write those scripts. Somebody's yeah. going to fall in love, meet somebody, fall in love, have a oh, moment. What? Well, at first, they have an issue. They don't, you know, like, like a woman hates all men, then, then the perfect guy comes along. Mm -hmm. Probably one of us works on the show here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we set the bar really high for these other guys out there. Yeah. All right, Hound Dog, all what right. do you think, buddy? Do you have a rating for us? Man, I got it. I do. I have a great rating for it. I don't really care for it. It's a four. 
It's all right. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. Okay, four it is. Slow. It'd be a good mixer. I think it'd be a good mixer. All right. If you want that spicy, I don't know. I don't. I don't like a lot of mixed drinks, but if you want a really nice spicy mixed drink, yeah, that. Give, but as we drink it neat, I give it a six. Six, and I kind of. Uh, it's strong, but sometimes I like a strong drink after a, a, a bad day. And since the price point is twenty five bucks, and I'm very frugal, that's another word for cheap. Um, it would be a, a seven for me. Oh, you so, make you, so daily you like drinker enough to, for a daily drinker. Yeah. I, well, <clears throat> when I come home, if I have a bad day, yeah, I, I'd like to have a bottle of that sitting there. Not not every day, but it can be <laughs> if it, all my days suck. So um, yeah, <laughs> well, you, it could, if it's the only bottle out in the house, I'd enjoy it more. But if I had a, a litter to pick from, wouldn't be my wouldn't make it my go to. And normally, I got you. I got hey, ask no hound dog. Normally, I'm the guy that rates things low, and hound dog went yeah. low on us this time. Yeah, I don't like it at all. And just for it's, just for just for I didn't mean to interrupt you. Just for a refresher for everybody out there, and who, who maybe just start listening. Our rating scale is one to ten. One being it's dog shit. Oh, yeah. Ten meaning it's fantastic. Seven is the point where it's a daily drinker. So uh, if it can hit a seven of the average of us three guys, then we consider it a daily drinker. So this yeah. one would not be a daily drinker. It'd be about a what? Yeah, uh, how? 5.6. 5.6. Yeah, so it's ask, not a why seven. do we set the daily drinker so high as a seven and not five? Because we, you know, we, we like what we like. We want it to be unique and it's got to stand out. If five just ain't going to do it. It's got to be a seven. seven and, it's, and it's a yeah. yeah. freaking show. So oh, yeah. Yeah. And, whatever, and, whatever the hell and, they want to do. Yeah. And more so, <laughs> more so, you know, uh, yeah, you know, we, we set the bar high. We, uh, we do. We yeah. want a good drink. As we live our lives, we set the bar high. Right. And I, I know we're getting, uh, we're getting way off topic because we have so many notes here to go over. But what aggravates me is you, you go on the YouTube and you watch these got these bourbon professionals say, hey, you know, the best best bourbons under $25. Well, who's he to say that they're the best bourbon? Yeah. Exactly. You know, the three of us generally can't degree, agree on what the best bourbon is. And they're going right. to say, you know. the And the, and the price yeah. has nothing to do with the way something tastes. I something right. could taste like, like I say, something could taste like crap and be fifty dollars, or something could taste like you said, Boone's bourbon, right? Boone's yeah. bourbon, drink Boone's bourbon. Yeah, that's 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 we a, need that's that a fairly reasonable. That's a reasonably priced bourbon, and it's fantastic, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right, so we do not have a daily drink. <clears throat> uh, Wild Turkey One Hundred and One, yeah. just to uh, finish it up. Although there it's it not going to stop us from enjoying it. But oh, yeah, could, we're not going to pour it out. But you could take the paint off the side of your house and you could run it in your car. So there you go. <laughs> True. <laughs> Are we pouring well, it again? Pour more. <laughs> here we go. Here goes the show. Hey, here goes. Here goes the twist top. <laughs> All right. Some of the topics today. What do you guys want to start? I mean, there's hey, somebody going on. Do. I guarantee you, next next podcast, I'll have a screw off sound sound bite. You need to put something lid. on the sound bite. That'd be good. Like. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> for, for we're drinking that ten dollar bottle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be should, good. That'd be good. Anything under ten dollars list should start calling Bucks Brew. Buck, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's I got agree. Bucks. We we should we should have a fourth raider in spirit and say Buck gives it a seven. You know, oh. yeah, just because yeah, because yeah. <laughs> he would. If he can get four <laughs> bottles under twenty bucks, they're all tens. <laughs> daily drinker, yeah. he could drink it and make a face like he ate a turd, and he'd still say daily drinker. <laughs> oh yeah, he'd go like, yeah. this. Oh, I like that, you know, with his <laughs> buck voice, you know. Yeah, but uh, sweet, that's sweet. funny. Cool. All right, Wild Turkey One Hundred and One, five point six. Not a daily drinker, but it could take the edge off on a bad. Oh yeah, day. and and again, just yeah. recapping the new listeners, Buck. Was a founder member of the podcast. Oh, I'm sorry. Wonderful yeah, guy. Yeah, lo lovely guy. He was he was the most liberal conservative I've ever met. But, <laughs> That's an but, oxymoron. But he brings a, <laughs> he brought so much. He brought so much to super intelligent. And oh, he, yeah. he can yeah. talk on any level with anybody about anything. And he's so, level-headed. You know, Very level-headed. Oh, well, I liked him. He got a dumb he was down the voice for of reason, and, and you've told oh, stories, yeah. Hound, about oh, him yeah. being the voice of reason out there oh, yeah. on the street. So, uh, oh, he was. Yeah, you've, you've mentioned that before. Yeah, well, he's a founder member. We lost him to a, a, a motor, uh, motorcycle accident. Whew. But was yeah. blessed through Rod, man. You know, God sends blessings yeah. different ways. You know, we met, we met Rod through, through Buck. Through Buck. Through Buck. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So here we are. Sure so, what, all right. So, what you talking about there, uh, Rod Nader? What I'm going to talk about, I wanted to bring up a tragic. Um, seen a uh, tragic incident in new york uh, i'm from new york and uh, i kind of key in on stuff like that but there was a gentleman 
in Brooklyn who was recently stabbed to death. It's been nationwide news. I saw it on the different uh, uh, national uh, networks. But uh, there was some there's some interesting things there. I think that we can learn from. And being that we have three officers here, three police officers here, 90 years of experience, which we always mention, I just want to get their take on it, get your guys' take. And uh, maybe I could give somebody out there listening a little heads up and some common sense. Common which, sense. Yes, <clears throat> which which most of our listeners probably will already know before I say it, but I don't know, just something. Anyway, so there's a gentleman in Brooklyn, 32-year-old man, um, and his girlfriend were at a bus stop in Brooklyn, bed bed sty type area. Um, if you know it, um, you know, you don't want to be at a bus stop at 4 in the morning, but that's where they found themselves. Sitting at a bus stop at four in the morning, not too sure the buses run at four in the morning in, in Brooklyn either. But I don't that, leave that alone. So we're probably but talking about city buses. You're not talking about Greyhound or no, 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 no. I'm talking about this is Brooklyn, New York city, city buses. Right. Um, and they're sitting on a bench, um, and along comes a gentleman who walks right by him. No, nothing happens. No incident. He's, he's got his hood pulled up. He's got a hoodie on, and he walks by them. He walks on down the sidewalk about 20 yards. Well, as the video runs, this is a street camera. As the video runs, the victim and his girlfriend get up and start walking in the same direction as the gentleman who just passed him. When they get closer to the gentleman who just passed him, he's maybe 15 yards up the road, 20 yards up the road. He comes to an intersection and he starts to kick over scooters. You know the little scooters you run around town on? You yeah. can, you can, you can, you know, swipe your card. Yeah. yeah, electric. I don't like maybe. those things either. I don't get on them because that's just a broken hip for an old guy like me. So I don't get sure. on that shit. I'll walk my ass. But so he's kicking over scooters and having some kind of mental, emotional breakdown or fit, whatever it is. And so I'll stop the story here. Four in the morning, Brooklyn. Guy in a hoodie is up front, in front of you, throwing a fit. And you're walking towards him. Slow and hound dog. Answer, just call it out. What do you do? If you're the guy and the if you're with your girlfriend and you're walking towards him, what do you do? Avoid. Oh yeah, cross the street, turn around, go the other way. Yeah. Avoid the uh crazy guy. Right. There's lots of yep. options. You could stop, go the other way, you could cross the street, um, diff- different things. What let me ask you this. This is a tougher question now. It, it takes common sense. So brace yourselves, and I'll give you some time. I'll even play Jeopardy music for you. What <laughs> What don't you do? You, do? you don't do this. Here, hold my liquor. <laughs> All right, man, what you doing over here? <laughs> what don't you do? Seriously, call it out. Confront him. Yeah, yeah, don't confront right. him. You don't, don't, you know, like you said, common sense. You don't keep walking towards him. Closing the distance now, while yeah. he's having a mental breakdown, because whatever triggered him to have a mental breakdown, it could have been the scooter. It could have been the dog shit on the sidewalk. Who knows? Right. Who cares? Your your goal should be to get your you and your girlfriend or, or significant other home safely yeah. without having to encounter a person having a mental breakdown. That's just common sense. Logical point. Number one. Yeah. He didn't do that. He continued to walk towards the guy having the fit. And when closed the distance, he got to within three or four feet at the intersection. The guy turned around and noticed him and said, what the F are you looking at? And that was it. The guy, the suspect pulls a knife out and said, what are you looking at? Victim says, chill, chill. Now the victim has his hand out and he's backing up going in the opposite direction, kind of like we said he should have done to fucking begin with. Yeah, oh, yeah. Power with. Now, I'm yeah. not victim I'm not victim bashing here, but I'm just, this is reality, folks. This is, this is reality, okay? So now he's backing up, going the opposite direction, which he should have done before, especially because he's got his girlfriend with him now yeah, to worry about. across the street. At right. Least. right. Yeah, he's backing up, backing up, chill, and the guy's still coming at him now <clears throat> aggressively and stabs him three times in the chest. He collapses. Falls on D- the ground. DRT. Then, that's right, dead right there. Then the guy goes to his girlfriend 
and kind of kind of gives it you know, kind of gives it a jump in her face and starts yelling at her and she just kind of like this and he left her alone and left victim dies there on the sidewalk well come come full circle um update they found the 18 year old gentleman say that lightly who stabbed him and of course you know the papers and his high school teacher said he just graduated and walked across the stage what a great young man he was excellent oh yeah they're going to show a picture of him like in a football uniform was yeah. play peewee football i'm waiting for the peewee 12 exactly. year old uniform picture of how yeah. what a sweet guy this guy is okay so now he's in custody uh for for uh murder the sec probably second degree um while my 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 uh, the victim is in the morgue now the thing that other thing I want to touch on is the victim has a background with Antifa and BLM riots and defunding the police. Oh, so it's a good re- killer. Yeah, the reason I bring that, <laughs> the reason I bring that up, <laughs> that was harsh, but man, that was funny. That was um, yeah. dead on it. Yeah, dead on it. Um, <laughs> the, the reason I bring that up is because a lot of times, uh, the Antifa BLM movement type people, the liberal minded people, who think that you. Hound Dog and me are all savages and we're, and we're corrupt cops and all that. They don't want to have any kind of inkling that they are any way racist or misogynist or Islamophobic or homophobic. Yeah, and they I don't think want, a lot of that plays into it. Right. But they yeah. don't want any of those words associated with them and they try to live their lives like that. And the speculation is on peop- of people a lot smarter than me. This is not me, but this, I agree with it. This is what was said is that he was of the mindset that he would not be the guy that would cross the street because he would look at that and look at you. If you did that in the same situation and crossed the street to avoid that, that man, you're racist because you're stereotyping that guy because he's black. That's what he would have said per his friends. His friends said yeah. he kept walking because he, he never would label people, and that's what we loved about him, and they're praising him. <laughs> well, he's fucking dead. Okay. Yeah. Because he and now he's labeled. Use, right. He didn't use. Yeah, he's got a label on him. Or he got a fucking yeah. toe tag. <laughs> yeah. He's now BRT. labeled. He yeah. He's labeled now. All right. He he his own crazy mindset of of trying to fit into this to this non realistic group of people got him killed. Period. They yeah. even went so far as to say if he could come back now, he would say don't prosecute or punish that man he who like, stabbed oh, me oh, oh, oh. he Bart. needs help <laughs> Damn, you're going dude. to hell yeah yeah <laughs> but, uh, but we'll be alongside we can do our podcast yeah. from there yeah, well, yeah. um Boy, but, yeah. hell in here so <laughs> the real the real message i'm trying to get across here is is that folks we have what's called a sixth sense and you could call it whatever you want hair on the back of your neck something in your stomach your gut feeling you don't ignore that. You yeah. listen to it because I think my friends here can tell you and, I, and agree with me when I say, I don't know how many times I've been out with a victim over my career. And they say, you know, I just I had a feeling that guy was up to something. But I just oh, yeah. I go, but you oh, just yeah. what? But you just what? Ignored I just didn't it. want to be that person, you know, who who uh, and then. Oh, so you got robbed. Yeah. So what are you going to do next time? Cross the street. What are you going to do next time? I'll call the police when I see people moving furniture out of my neighbor's oh, yeah. house. I'm not going to assume they're moving. Like, you know, just use your head and don't be afraid to call 911. We love it because you could, pre- you could be preventing a crime, interrupting a crime, or saving a life. And if you don't, then you're left going like this. You know, I thought I should have done that. And we want to shake the shit out of you and go, why didn't you? Yeah. You, you know, saw that it actually happen. happened. Actually yeah. happened. We, we, uh, believe your... To- be- one last thing. So believe your eyes, believe your eyes, well, your nose, your, your senses, believe, your believe, gut instinct. believe your we, gut instinct. That's six cents. Yes. All right, we respond. I'm we done. respond to it. We respond to a B and E get there on patrol and the house seriously is empty. It's like they just moved out furniture. Everything's gone. And you, know, you guys know, been a detective. First thing you do, you start knocking on doors, next door neighbors. Yeah, we just thought that was odd. There was that you know that they hired somebody in the middle of the day just to move them out, and we didn't see them. And, <laughs> and, and you they never called home. the cops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And was were the dishes were dishes wrapped up and everything? Was there like blankets yeah, over I mean, the first? I'm, yeah. serious, I'm serious. Everything <laughs> curtains. Everything's gone. Golly. These people come home from work and everything's just gone. And the neighbors watched the people do it. Unbelievable. Mm. Yeah, and then you know, people also asking about the. Who is responsible for protecting you? 
You are. Yeah, nine percent chance they're, they're the cops. No, we're not. You're right. the number one person responsible for protecting you and your family. Right. Right. It's like and that. What, old... And what slow? What do we always tell people too? We come for cleanup. We don't come to yeah. save you. We're late. We we have a minimum. I think the fastest time we get you know seven minute response time. Ten minute. Do you know how much can happen in seven to ten minutes? Oh yeah. It's, oh, yeah, it's like yeah. an average yeah. response time. <clears throat> My God, and God forbid we're on a we're on a homicide over here and a robbery over here, and, and units are tied up, and you have no one to come help you. And you can for bleed out minutes. You can bleed out in yeah. three minutes. Yeah, we'll bring a squeegee and a mop. We'll mop you up and take you to the morgue. You've got to take care of yourself. You got to have responsible for yourself. That's why when people aren't aren't armed and they don't, I think everybody who's who's mentally capable should get training and arm themselves. Because you are responsible for you and your family. That gun is a tool. It, yes, it, it, that's yeah. all it is. And, and it can save few, your life. Clarify a few, quick few things. Yeah, one is, uh, you know, people also also say, you know, talk about the comps re response time. You know, a lot of times, and it, I always go back to my, my mom. I remember my mom said when I was a little kid, a cop would come up to a red light and his blue lights and just blow and, and get through the red light and turn the blue lights off. And he's speeding down the road. My mom was, oh, I guess he's late for lunch or, you know, late getting home. They always say that. Mm -hmm. Well, no, what it is is, you know, if it's 3 a.m. and somebody's breaking into a house and we know there's people in the house, we're coming blue light siren. You know, really, the, the number one goal is not catch the bad guy. It's to scare him away and get him away from the victim. Mm -hmm. That's why we're blue light, we're siren, getting there as fast as we can. And catching the bad guy secondary, your safety's primary. But if it's you know, a B&E to a building in the middle of the night, you know, we're going to what's called code black. You know, we're going to. Not run sirens, blue lights, or thing, because we're gonna stop a block away and, and hike in, and try to catch the bad guy. No, yeah. like that, but yeah, that's exactly right. And I don't mean to interrupt you on it, but we also okay. getting canine in route, right? We're getting troops around. We're setting up a perimeter. We already got dispatcher doing all that stuff, and we need to do it quietly because we don't like to, you know, once they get outside and they get in the woods or they get to running, it, it's a whole different story. So you're exactly right on that. Not only that, but sometimes these calls we can't run blue light and siren because it's against our directives, but we need to get somewhere quick. So we don't run it 100%, but in order to go through a light, if something up, if something ramps up a little bit, we'll use it then. And not only that, but sometimes I've been through a red light with my blue light and siren, and then I get 22'd, meaning I get called off the call. Oh, it was a false alarm, or oh, 22 means just disregard. <laughs> so what, what do you do? You turn off your light and siren right after you went through a red light, and people look at you like, yeah, you son of a bitch, you just did it because yeah. you were running a red light. No, lady, I wasn't. I and right. So many rabbit holes to go down, but uh, I remember being <laughs> Churchill and Garrison. That's in Gastonia, where uh, Reggie and I police, how, how long and I police. And I'm sitting there, and I've got the green, I've got the red light, and people's got the green light. So I was just sitting there. I'm like, smell the damn light. What is wrong with you idiots? And then it hits me. Oh, my blue, blue lights. Somehow I hit my blue lights. So I'm sitting there, my yeah. blue lights on, and they're waiting to give me the right of way. Yeah, yeah. Because by the law, said they have to, and I, I'm the and idiot. They're doing so right. Little, You're doing yeah, right. You're I'm the idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you're now, you're calling them dumbasses. <laughs> Who's a dumbass? Well, I tell you, yeah. when I realized it was, I took off and went down about two blocks and turned off, then turned my blue lights off. So they wouldn't know I was an idiot. Yeah. A little right. self-reflection after that. Yeah. Huh? Go to, ahead, re <laughs> to reiterate what uh, Rod said, a lot can happen in seven minutes on police response time. If I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> when Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman got killed, they got both of them at the same time got killed stabbed to death less than a minute so if you right. don't fit you must quit if it don't yeah. fit you must quit what if that was yeah. the same thing in, in a sexual assault try this condom <laughs> on if it don't fit you must oh, quit. oh, oh man. man i but just threw it in my mouth how, jesus that's just christ to show you how fast two lives well, can be snuffed out oh you're right you know yep. and the time it takes the police to get there so you got to defend yourself do all yep. you can do to defend yourself mm-hmm yeah, you mm -hmm. you are the number one person responsible for you and your family's safety. And I th yep, yep. And I think the advantage we have being police officers and being in the job for thirty years each is, we've seen the evil. <laughs> we've seen the bad people out here, and I'll tell you what, some of them are pretty scary. And if they came through my door, oh, there's monsters out there. I couldn't yeah. imagine not having a weapon because right. even as, as as capable as I may be. Why not to do it? I'm putting two in the freaking chest and I'm calling it a day and I'm calling mm -hmm. the police.
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Clean, clean and squeegee in a bucket and bring a big ass gurney because this suck is heavy. Oh, and, and let me back up talk about the good killing. In the Teddies, we used to always say we you know, we get a call and you have one bad guy that kills another bad guy, call mm-hmm. that a good killing. One bad guy's off the street dead, one guy's bad off off the street in prison. Mm-hmm. Right. Unless you're in New York, then he gets, you know, no bail. Yeah. <laughs> Until the trial. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> see you in my two months. Written promises. Make sure you co- make sure you come back for the trial. You gotta come back for your murder trial. <laughs> Behave until then. Okay. Yeah. Try not to kill anybody. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! But yeah, yeah but I, I tell you what, I could talk about that all day in New York because New York's just is just it, it has gone so far downhill since I was back in the you know back in the nineties and two thousand when it was cleaned up and Giuliani was in office and he did such a great job and even when yeah. the next guy came, but. Now these last two man with uh, who was the who was the big bird who was the one before this guy, what was the name? De Blasio. Oh my God, oh. That, that guy was terrible. The mayor and now this guy Adams, who is a, ca- a retired captain of the NYPD. You think he'd be a little bit squared away? Fucking idiot. What yeah, you a think he, he, he's walk the walk. He's you know he's. He's yeah. just all politics now, and that's the problem. That that's, that's the problem. That's the problem. Say what you got to say problem. to get elected. Yep. yep. Say what you got to say to get promoted, too. Yeah. Oh, no, you're right yeah. there. Just, that's just why I got stopped at Captain. I ran my fucking mouth, and I know I is, and that's <laughs> fine, but shit, man. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. I'm done, guys. That was my uh, that was my story, uh, New York guy. It's, yeah. it's terrible, man. Just, Renee, just going back right quick. Yeah, yeah, going back right quick to the common sense stuff. If it looks suspicious, it is suspicious. Call the cops. Yeah. It's right. not People just always ask. Right. Well, somebody we, else. We these community watch meetings and say, well, what's suspicious? Well, whatever looks suspicious to you, you know, mm-hmm. to me, if you know, if I'm riding down uh, uh, as a, you know, riding down the road and I see it's a predominant white neighborhood and I see a black guy, you know, tweaking on the door or a white guy tweaking on the door and there's no service van out there. That's suspicious. You know, stop and check. And, OK, uh, yeah, uh, he's just locked himself out of his house. Once you check, he's, he's out of his house. The cops be on the way. Hey, sorry, let me kind of help you get in the house. He's on his way. The worst thing you've done is is had a cop come out in your neighborhood. You put a cop in your neighborhood one more time during the day and he might not be in there. That's what yeah. you've done. And, and, Call and the segue cops. Off, segue off of that. I don't know how many times I've had people walking through my neighborhood. It's kind of a connection between two other areas that aren't so hot. And we have people walking through. And of course, you know, the, the typical, can I rake you long? You knock it on your door. Can I clean your gutters oh, and so forth like guy. that? <clears throat> yeah. We have them walk it through and some don't, they just walk through and they eyeball and, um, I'll put it on the damn number one. I'll go out and talk to him. If he's, you know, if I'm, if I can actually get to him, uh, I'll talk to him number one, but if not, I'll put it on the website, uh, a little neighborhood. It's like a little neighborhood thing on Facebook. Yeah. You can put like a, Hey, be on the lookout and I'll put description, boom, 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 boom. Um, <clears throat> just to warn people, because as we all know, my neighbors, and I try to warn them all, don't let anybody do any work for you because the second you do that, you're giving them permission to be on your property. Right. And then it gives them the permission to say that, oh, I know this guy. I do work for him when you're not home and he's breaking into your fucking house. No, don't ever do that. You hire people who are legit, got insurance and all oh, that yeah. stuff, not not these yeah. homeless people. Even though you want to help them, I get it, but don't. But and a lot of times they'll do. They'll clean your gutter. Hey, uh, sir, may I use your bathroom right quick? He goes use the bathroom, unlocks the bathroom window because he's coming sure. back yeah. later. Sure. And then later when he's at your house and the police catch him, so to speak, because you have a great neighbor like me who's got common sense and snatches him up. Then we find out you let him do work for you and he was coming back for payment. He was just kind of checking out or seeing if your gutters need yeah. cleaning. He has excuses. And then the police officer is going to go, well, we can ban him now. And if he comes back, then we'll, you know, don't just don't save yourself the trouble. It's not worth the trouble. I'd rather you hand the mother dude 20 bucks and tell him to leave. <laughs> Than to, yeah. than to give him permission to be on your property. Yeah, you know? back when I, mean, when I was in Gastonia, man, I had the exact same thing happen to me. I was at home one day, and a guy comes knocking this is on the door. a good story, by the way. Go ahead. <clears throat> and uh, so I'm, I'm out there with him, and I know the guy. I recognize him because, you know, I've had to call after call after call on him, and he was, uh, you know, he was known to want to do work for people and go back when they wasn't home and steal their shit. That's what he did. So I get up, I get out with him and say, listen, man, I know who you are. I know what you do. The best thing for you to do is get the fuck out of this damn neighborhood <laughs> and don't fucking ever come back. Quite the welcome wagon you are. Hey, I very same thing ever. Very same thing so ever. Don't shoot up mountain. fuck out of my neighborhood. So from, from, the time that, from the time that that happened, I don't think that I seen him back in that neighborhood because he knew that I knew who mm-hmm. he was. 
mm-hmm. what he's doing. Same thing mm-hmm. here. She out in September the ninth. It's funny that uh, you know people ask. So tell uh, like you. You know we have a uh, little uh, email thing we send out to everybody. Yeah, and they're like, how do you remember the, the date and time? So it's just ingrained in us cops because everything's done on time. If you're a cop, you do everything by the by the watch. It's 7 o'clock. Now, we don't get a lot of visitors up here, and anything past my house is really four-wheel drive. And he comes up, and it's in a um, burgundy sedan, four-door. He comes by at 7 o'clock. Says, huh, I recognize that car. He goes on up the mountain. It's gotten dark now, and uh, just so happens I'm out, outside looking at the pond, checking the pond out, and... He comes back down eight fifteen and stops down the road, and I can see it. You know, at my neighbor's house, who is don't is not there. That they say vacation home for him. So I go down and confront him, and he said, "Oh, I'm just stopping to pick up apples." And I gave him the little, the little speech. Well, you don't belong here. You're not going to be here. When you come up here, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get somebody's talking to you, and I got my flashlight out, and of course I got a gun on my side. I don't know if you noticed that or not, but you know, I told him, "You know, brother, you don't belong here. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, you know, you don't. It's time to go." Mm-hmm. There you go. And yep. everybody, you know, and everybody's like, hey, man, we're glad we got a cop on the mountain. Finally got a cop on the mountain. No, we don't. It, it, you don't need to be a cop. Maybe no. if, if you're not comfortable, confront somebody. Don't confront them. Call the right. cops. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah, I'm be, not a cop anymore. I'm a be, civilian like you. Be the, yeah. best, you know? be the best witness you can be. Sure. Yeah. You know, we don't sure. want you out there and confront the guy. If you're not comfortable and you don't have the skills to do that, don't confront him. But, but call you be able to and let him. somebody know. Yes, yeah, a yeah. white guy wearing a blue yeah. button up yeah. shirt and shorts. He's got some little dog in the car. This thing this guy was wearing. Or a tag. A tag, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a bur- it's a burgundy car, and he had no kind of place. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they, you, they, you, you don't no... hurt anybody. E- even if they don't catch him slow, right? They have, the, they have the car, the description, and the tag. And if something did happen, they have a lead Oh yeah, to track down. If somebody got killed up yeah. in the mountain or somebody did burned a house down, this car was, oh, we got a call, a 911 call. It was uh, about a, a suspicious car. They have a lead. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and, and on the hurt. other end of it. Yeah, uh, I like to hike, and I you know, first moved up here. I don't know a lot of people, and I'm hiking up on top of the mountain. And a good friend of mine now, Denny, and his wife comes by on the ATV, and he stops. Hey, man, can I help you? Are you lost? Uh, do you belong here? Uh, do you have property up here? Who are you? And I was just as happy as I could be that he stopped and checked me. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I told him what I was. I told him I just moved up here. I told him where I lived. He said, oh, yeah, I know that place. Man, I knew, we knew somebody just bought that. And, yeah, man, didn't didn't offend me one bit. I was happy he checked me, and I saw that's what I told him. I check everybody up here if they belong here, or like my brother came up, or you guys came up. I'm not here, and you guys came up and they say, "Hey, what are you doing here?" You know, I'm down at Coverage Place. You know, yeah, yeah. you ain't gonna get offended. Check no, people up. People who are legal and not doing anything wrong don't usually get offended. <laughs> they have no issue whatsoever telling you who they and are let, while they're there. At exactly least let right. people know you seen them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. That's like uh, well, for instance here. I live on a dead end street and we don't have hardly any, we have foot traffic, people walking dogs and stuff, but we know everybody that lives on our street. And another week I <clears throat> looked down and I see a guy walking down the street and said, man, I don't know who that dude is. So I go out, he gets in past my house by the time I get out there and I just watch him walk down the street. Then I kind of follow him and make sure he leaves completely off the street you know, from my house just mm-hmm. before so he won't go breaking in anybody's other house because we have vacation homes down here as well. Mm-hmm. But it's it's just you got to take the initiative to check out your damn neighborhood. Yeah. I see if you. If you see something suspicious, right. check it out. If nothing else, yep. look at them and put the phone to your ear. I'm calling the yeah. cops. Yeah. Yeah. Or, and or we don't mind. Like being cops, we don't mind. I'd rather come mm-hmm. out and check a suspicious subject right now because that's just that's nothing. Uh, I am ten eight means I'm back in service. I just checked out is you know it's it's hound dog and I've took all his information and cut him loose and I'm ready for another call as opposed to come back two hours later and do a break and enter report. Mm-hmm. It's going to take me an hour get CSI right. out there to fingerprint because mm-hmm. somebody didn't call in to check a suspicious or a rape subject. or murder report. Oh, yeah. That's that's even so yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of single people living in here, females, and it's nice that, just, you, uh, that you noticed that, brother. Oh, you know, well, you're, hey, an observer. The, you're a, a trained observer. I'm a trained observer. Hey, on the uh, a positive <laughs> note, I finally finished that god awful wild turkey 101. I'm getting ready to get some better stuff now. What you drinking now? <laughs> I'm a door. Oh, nice. you're a what? Okay. You're a what? I'm a door. I'm a door. It's good, I'm a door. Man. I'm a podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> that made me what was that one? uh what was that uh i'll think about it that just triggered something in my mind but i can't quite 
thing. I got that off Howie Mandel here if you watch his special. What's that? He's, I'm a dog. No, Howie Mandel, back before he used to do comedy, oh, he's so oh. funny. But he asked a guy in the audience, he's interacting with college, uh, what do you do? He says, uh, I'll, I'll be him. He goes, I'll be Howie. <laughs> so that's where I got that from. <laughs> Howie Mandel, I remember him. He used to do that baby voice. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's so funny. Oh, yeah. baby voice. Go back and yeah. watch his very first special. Uh-huh. He's, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. He's stupid. But anyway. Yeah, that's funny. All right, man. Current yeah. events, man. What what we got going oh, on? We, so we talked about prior. Man, the thing is in my head is this Gaza Strip, this yeah. Israel thing. Could you believe that? Man, I tell on, you what. On their holiday, during the young, one of the holidays. Oh, I'm well, I'm Jewish sure that's guy. planned. Yeah. yeah. God, that's, that's God's chosen people. Yeah, yeah. You don't go messing around with those people. This was 50 years to almost to the day, October, um, I believe it was 6th in 1973, the Yon really? Kipper. And, I didn't yeah, realize well, it was 50, 50 years ago. 50 years to the day, which is significant wow. according to the Muslim deal. So, uh, yeah, they came into Gaza Strip, and they. Um, I, I read a little bit more about it. Uh, when they invaded, there was a um, there was a rave going on, a, a, a festival, a, a concert where a lot of people came um, from other places, countries, to see this peace. It's like, it was like a peace uh, concert. A peace, peace. The theme was peace, you know, right. and, and and love and all this crap, like Woodstock type shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, all of a sudden, here comes these guys that, from the Gaza Strip up, um, rockets, um, people, a car, truck, hand gliders. trucks, p- hand glide, people in, in pickup trucks with got gunmen. That was just creative. Mur- they just them. That was creative. Yeah, they're just murdering people. They're just killing people. There's there's terrible videos, terrible videos of bodies just thrown. These are civilians yeah. um, being being killed, murdered, <clears throat> uh, raped. They're being uh, tortured. Bodies that have been killed are being uh, horrific things are being done to dead bodies. Um, they're kidnapping people for future terror and future ransom and money, um, and it's just. And it's very, it's very significant, guys. Because I'm surprised um, they haven't declared war earlier. They did. Well, yeah. Well, they did today. Netanyahu. Yeah. It's it's going to be there's hell to pay, and I think they're going to turn the Gaza Strip into a fucking parking lot. And I can't. They wait. need to. I hope they yeah. fucking do. Yeah, yeah. Here's the deal, and that's probably why I'm not a four star general or whatever in the military. Is guess what, people? You may be in it, civilians, but you're among all these other nasty people. You need to find somebody else to be because at twelve noon. Mm-hmm. Your city's no longer going to exist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I agree. Well, you, and you know, and and all we do here on the, in this country, and you know, on one side of the aisle is is promote the Palestinian people. Like th- this is where the common sense goes out of my head. They're terrorists. Yeah, Israel is a country about <clears throat> this big. Okay, it's smaller than Long Island, right? It's about this freaking big, and they're surrounded by a billion Muslims who hate them. And all they're trying to do is survive. And they don't even want to acknowledge them as a people. They don't want to acknowledge them as human beings. They don't want to acknowledge them as anything. They want to run them into the sea, which they've tried to do for since since the creation. Right. And it just ain't happening, as as you and I have talked about. It ain't happening. Israel's there to stay. Oh, and yeah. I just what's coming is going to be epic because uh, Israel hasn't really opened up. But apparently, I heard they got the green light from the UK, the US. And all our, all their other partners that do what you gotta do, and I'm telling you what, and you know, and 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 walls talk about walls real quick and security, uh, <laughs> folks. Yeah, wall walls work. Se- secure and, your border. Oh, secure your borders. Yeah, our yeah. southern border. I do not use this it's as an invasion. example. It is <laughs> exactly. an invasion. Yeah. Two million. It's an invasion. It's exactly yeah. what it is. Undocumented people. You think they're all friendly? Exactly. You think they're all just leaving exactly. something harsh coming exactly. to here for sanctuary? Can, can, no. Can you guys tell a uh, a Latin America person from a Middle Eastern person? I, no. I really, really can't. Okay. I mean, I don't know. And once they get here, who knows what the intentions are? Maybe we'll maybe we're having an infiltration of people who someday are going to pick up guns and turn them hey, on. And I'm sure, I'm sure there's yeah. there's, I'm there's, sure. there's people doing it. And just mm-hmm. like with uh, what Cuba did. Mm-hmm. When they had the uh, Cuban invasion, people coming, yeah, know, all the Cubans coming yeah. here. Yep. He yep. emptied his prisons. Yep. And put them yeah. on boats over here. Yeah. When, right now, that's probably what they're doing because we're just letting them in. We're letting them in, and, and just just think about the the and the only reason it's getting any kind of coverage now is because Texas got tired of footing the bill and start shipping these guys to these. That was brilliant. Sanctuary, was that not brilliant? Sanctuary. That was brilliant. 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 That was. Uh, now, once they're there, well, wait a minute. 
It was the yeah. it was the best. It's always the same old thing. We should give them housing and homes. Hey, you want to take one? Nope, didn't think so. It's the same old. It's it's the heartstrings. I don't have heartstrings. Fuck that. <laughs> Logic, reality, facts, Logic. common yeah, sense. Yeah, common sense. That's it. Take your heart out of it. Take your heart and put it in a box. And, and ba- you gotta think logically. You don't yeah. want them in your neighborhood. What if we dump? If somebody dumped a busload, a great busload of immigrants, as, as sad as I'd be for them, I'd say, get them the hell out of here. Don't don't camp on my lawn. I'd be throwing those bastards out. Well, I don't I'm care. A, I'll tell issue. you right now, if they done that at, at Shootout Mountain, at the end of the day, they, them the invasion people would be going like, yeah, I know why they call it Shootout Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, you know what? And I'm when sorry. we talk uh, about securing the borders, that's not just the borders, you know, for the uh, country. Secure the borders of your residence, of your house. Absolutely. That way, you know, <clears throat> when you leave the house, lock the damn door. That, and that, that's a perfect example, huh, dog? Why do we have locks on our doors? If we want an open border and just let everybody in, hell, why, do you, why don't you just let everybody in your house? Yeah, why don't you let exactly. everybody in your yard? You don't. You have fences. It's your yep. property. You need to be secure. It's yours. You don't know who, who this next guy is or who this next well, female is who's coming in or what's going to happen. All these yep. high-end politicians have gates around their communities. All gates. Guards at the gates. Mm-hmm. They're no, surrounded they're not, gated, not only that, but gated yep. communities, but gates around. And then, and then another wall around their house. Like, you know what I yeah. mean? And yeah, guess right. what they're protected by? People with Security. guns. With guns. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. Yep. Exactly right. Uh, it's always, it's always, just, it's okay for me, but not for you. Oh yeah, don't. Yeah. Co- yeah. I know what's what best is. for you, right? And what yeah. I have isn't what's best for you. You need to be uh, uh, unarmed. Me, I need it because I'm important. I'm a congressman or I'm a yeah. senator. And I tell you, yeah. and it's funny up here, and I keep talking about the mountains, but it is the mountains. It's uncommon if you see somebody that don't have a gun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know, still like old school, the shotgun in the back window, or you know, you go into the. You know, local store down here, man, you have three or four people, they got guns on their sides. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like I'm the, uh, what's the word? I'm I'm the. Outsider. Not oddball. outsider, but yeah, the oddball because generally mine's covered. Most of these guys, yeah. they're carrying them, you know, they're John Wayne in it. And mm-hmm. I'm glad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, crap, here's the fan, you know, I'm not going to be the one shooting the bad guy. Oh, dude. Yeah. Because yeah. think about it, the guys are stripped. They were just celebrating, no security, there was nothing around, and these guys just invaded in and just slaughtered them. Mm-hmm. slaughtered all those people yeah i'm telling you man i'm telling you and and, and it's just and the, and the thing is it's just it's just it's I'm sorry, i feel so bad for those people israel's never going to be not on do you know that everybody in israel is required to be in the military everybody in israel is required yeah. to have a gun at their hands yeah. like i had a good they, buddy columbia yeah. i think he's from john uh-huh. uh yeah, he said when you come out of high school, you have two years. You was police officer for two years or military for two years. If you're a man, that's that's the only choices you had. After that, you go right. to college. You're doing what you want to right. do. But the around high school, either military for two years or cop for two years. Yep. Oh, really? That's Israel. That's Israel. Yeah. Yep. Because oh, they, they 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 have a limited amount of people, and there's, I mean, they're surrounded by the oceans on one side, the Red Sea, right, and then everywhere yeah. else. That's just enemies. And, and a lot of pe- a lot of people probably think you know. The, the stuff that's going over there, the Gaza Strip and Israel and all, that's the plumb across the world. I ain't got a thing in the world to do with America. But you know what? Israel is our allies. Mm-hmm. They are. They have our have had our back more times than you know. Mm-hmm. And the same people hate the Israels. Hate us. us. Hate us. Yeah. 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 We're so, the great Satan. We're the great Satan. That's so the word. Whatever, ha- whatever happens Satan. over there mm-hmm. does and will affect mm-hmm. us. It yep. does. Yep. And, I just hate the fact that uh, the Hezbollah who, for people who don't know, is the uh, uh, terrorist group. Uh, it's the main main group over there that's that started this. The spokesman literally came out and said, gave credit to Iran uh, of being their ally and, and who kind of sponsored this and kind of supported this attack. The reason I bring that up in its significance is, is that our president just gave Iran $6 billion plus five hostages for five hostages we got back. So he paid them. He released $6 billion of the money that was frozen to them. And I think the irony here, too, is, and I'm putting two to two together here. I'm not the smartest guy, but $6 billion. So Iran got $6 billion coming to him, and all of a sudden somebody funds this Hamas attack on Israel, and the spokesman for Hamas says, thank you, Iran. Hmm. I would hate to think 
that we funded. Back to common sense. That we funded. But common sense would say that, but let's not use common sense. But if we did, you might think that maybe we funded that freaking attack. Unbelievable how two faced we could be here. Folks, I'm telling you what, if I was, I would, if you're <clears throat> able and capable, get some training, get you a firearm, whatever you're comfortable with, something to protect yourself. Make sure you lock your doors and windows at night. Don't be a victim by your own hand. That's all I'm saying. Take care so, of yourself. My question is, since when did the United States start negotiating with terrorists? Since uh, since they Trump got out of office. Sleep, sleepy Joe. <laughs> well, Trump Trump put sanctions 100 percent on Iran, and then and then and then well, and Obama I'm, I'm, had an Iran nuclear deal with him. So I mean, I'm, I'm it depends the, who's in office. I'm glad that they're <laughs> the five. Uh, detainees that we got back <clears throat> i'm glad we got them back but what here's the way the negotiation should have went give us our people back or we're going to blow your sorry ass country off the fucking map do you know donald trump brought back dozens and dozens and dozens of hostages you, ever, you, you remember that when yeah. he was in office yeah. people yeah. would come off the plane he never yeah. paid a penny for any of them no how did he get them back i don't know i don't care the man right. did the job i know how because yeah. they knew and that's why that uh <laughs> i do you know, know. You, you know Ukraine got an invasion now under, under Trump because Trump was like, you know what? Click this big old stick I got. Let me, let me give you, you, let you me a deal give with me. I'm going to hit you with the yeah. stick. Let me give you a history. George W. Bush, uh, uh, George W. was in office. Russia invaded Georgia, not <laughs> Georgia in the United States, Georgia, Russia. Yeah. Uh, Obama's in office. Putin invades Crimea. Trump's in office. Putin don't fucking flinch. Doesn't do a damn thing. We paid what a yep. dollar sixty eight a gallon for gas. Damn right. right. Biden in office, <clears throat> they invade Ukraine. Yeah. What's the what's what's the what's the common thing here? The common you know? denominator is weak ass they, fucking weak weakness. They can that's right. They can explode. Goes back weakness. to common sense. A lot of yep. Democrats are talking to them. Globalist type thinking. Yep. yep. Exactly right. Yeah. You may be a Democrat, but did you not like a dollar and sixty eight cents a gallon? Yeah. You know, we, we're yeah. farming out all this oil stuff, mm -hmm. and you know, and. Guess who's the, getting money for the oil too? Iran. Yeah, and the powers to yeah. be are cutting back <laughs> on on oil production to raise the price. Exactly right. And yeah. we're sitting on the best oil there is in the world, and we refined it better. If you uh, want right. better refined oil, let us produce our own oil. And and for you green people, that what he's trying to say is for you green people, we refine it cleaner, so the air's cleaner, which is what all you green crazy people want to do anyway. So yeah. now when you leave it to Venezuela, who we cut a deal with, who are terrorists, because their regime now was placed there because they don't have elections anymore, now they're getting money. Venezuela. And Iran's getting money, too, because they're big oil producers. Ugh. We're no longer energy independent because of numb nuts. That's, it's, 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 it's so crazy. Yeah. And you're paying more at the pump, just oh, like yeah. with everything else. Yeah. And, so. well, of course, his, you know, we've talked about this before. His very first thing when he went into office was to – shit can the keystone pipeline that's right and he did and he did, he did. And all those americans he, out, of, out of work yeah yeah and if you remember last thing i'll say he also shit canned the remain in mexico policy and he also stopped any more wall being built which just the other day he said we're going to build 20 miles a wall yeah <laughs> because it's needed yeah what a fucking idiot and he is a fucking idiot folks yeah, folks, please wake up. Yeah, our country's just is hey, floundering. And here's something you, I'm sure you know. You may know if you follow the news, you know. Guess you know China's not. They're, they're going to take over the United States and never fire, never fire a, a bullet. You know, yeah, they're buying up. They're, they are the number one Farm. owner of farmland mm -hmm. in the United States. Mm -hmm. They're buying up all yeah. the land around our military facilities. Right, it's close to, and they shouldn't be allowed <clears throat> to do that. No, they shouldn't. I agree. It's like that down balloon that flew over the country. Exactly. So now, just just to recap, we're funding Ukraine war, 180 billion to this point. Now yeah. we have Israel, who's going to need our help. How many homeless uh, veterans we could right. feed in the house with that right. money? Right. Yeah. Right. And China is looking at Taiwan, licking their chops. They're drooling. Listen, we have the weakest leader we've ever had. If we survive till 2024 and we can get him out of there, I pray. That's all I pray. Yeah. All right. Uh, that, so on, that, on that positive note, <laughs> so, so that's I'm going to go and enjoy our day. <laughs> I'm going to go fly a kite. Oh, Bill Burr again. If you if you don't if you don't know who Bill Burr is, he's the greatest comedian he's in the world. Great. He's great. So oh, he's funny. He's so funny. But he's talking about oh, oh, always walking down the street. He's pissed. Oh, he's pissed off. <laughs> and as this is, you probably start a podcast. We get him all pissed off and send him out in the world. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Bill Burr, he's. He is funny, the things he talks oh, about. He's, he is he's so true. funny. It, 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 he's not politically correct, but he's 100% always true. 
that's the thing. That's why comedians are so diff- good. Comedians are funny because everything they talk about has some truth in it, and there's reality. Yeah. And, he and, he- and, and they just point it out. And he had uh, two women heckling, uh, or a table full of women heckling one time. He goes, "Yo, you understand a comedian? I tell jokes, right? Jokes. <laughs> you understand it, right? It's jokes. Yeah. And yeah. you, you yeah. pay good money to come see me. It's right, jokes. Right. It's just you're jokes. You pay jokes, right? Yeah." Shut the fuck up! You're paid for this. Yeah, yeah. We went to uh, we went to a comedian place in uh, in Charlotte one time, and back then I had a, a really I had hair. It was all uh, not a flat top, but it was like all around. And the first thing that is a uh, when a lady comedian came out, we're sitting right front. First thing was she lit in a bit about my, about my hair. She's a black lady. She could talk about me being a white boy with black hair because it was, it, was it wasn't it wasn't a it wasn't a bush, but it was. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and I'm laughing with you. Know, Why she ain't picking? She's she's a comedian. She's telling jokes. Yeah, right, right, right. right. <clears throat> yeah, wasn't offended bur- at all. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that bird guy was funny though. But yeah, so just oh, uh, press for Israel, man, and hope they can, and hope it doesn't escalate f- further because you know, there's a lot, there's a there's a we'll billion right Muslims out them. there in that area. Yep, and yeah. if it, it goes and we we get pulled in. Then what do we do, right? We've just given a bunch of ammunition, a bunch of things to Ukraine. I mean, it's just it's just crazy. Yeah, but just prayers, prayers, prayers are needed. Yeah. All right, guys, it's that time of day we revisit our bourbon. Well, All right. I don't have any left of the, what we had, but oh, thank goodness, <laughs> <laughs> that was awful. We uh, we did the wild turkey one, and we <laughs> rated it. Uh, uh, Hound dog gave it a gave it a measly four. He's not real yeah. impressed. Not uh, a not drinker. All. Slow gave it a six. It's just right on the cusp, if you will. I like that word, cusp. Cusp. And uh, I gave it a, a seven pie? because. <laughs> What's that? Didn't, didn't it a pie? Didn't he, didn't he lead the uh, us into a massacre of Indians? Cusperder. Cusperder. Cust. It's a joke. I didn't cusp. say custard. Yeah, I'm not eating a dessert. <laughs> I said cusp. All right, and seven. I gave it a seven as a daily drinker just because uh, it's nice when you come home and uh, and uh, you like that hot rough day. Octane. It could knock it off, yeah. And it's only $25 a bottle, so the price point was good. So Wild Turkey 101, it'll clean your pipes. You can run your car. You could uh, take paint off your side of your house, whatever. So that's yeah, where it's I... Just, uh, like I said, again, if it was a uh, only bottle I had sitting in the house, I would enjoy it. But if I had oh, something yeah. more palatable, I'd probably pick something over. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Right, Any last words, guys? Uh, just again, prayers for Israel, um, and pray we don't get into World War Three. Pray we get some, uh, really some common sense, logical, intelligent people running the country. That'd be great. But other I don't that, think Israel's going to be as tolerable to other people as we are. No, they're not. No, they're not. And uh, just be safe, everybody. And again, just make sure to protect yourselves, your family. Common sense. You see something, say something about it. Call call the police um don't let your neighbors mm-hmm. be victims because you don't want to upset get somebody involved. Or you don't want to get, get involved, involved. Yeah. yeah yeah i am my brother's keeper that's correct mm-hmm. that's and, correct you know, i'd like to give right. a shout out shout out this week to uh, my wife bobby and her sister becky they lost her father uh earlier on well a couple of days ago and you know i love you guys and anything that y'all ever need from me please don't hesitate you know where i'm at well, let's and I got, Bobby knows where you're at. She I got might. one more slow. <laughs> hey, you guys, you remember this ride? Oh, yeah, let's take a few minutes yeah. to talk about that. Yeah. Okay, it's a, it's a memorial ride. Yeah, it's a memorial yep. ride. I, I don't know, let me give it the entry. I got Jeff Green and Paul Lamond, two officers that were uh, killed in the line of duty, did a bike ride for them um, a few years back around this time, so I figured I'd wear the shirt. Yep. And how would you fill us in on uh, the next uh, yeah the next memorial uh, ride? The next uh, grunt and well, <laughs> uh, Jeff and Paul memorial ride will be October the twenty first, starting at the Iron Horse there in uh, Monroe, North Carolina, and it's I think they usually go for a sixty mile roundabout ride throughout the put Union on by the local chapter, the good old boys, put on by, pigs. by the renegade pigs, good old boys, okay. yep. Okay. And, no. You know, please go out and support their, you know, their thing. I think they charge, they want a donation of twenty dollars for a ride, for a rider, and ten or fifteen dollars for a passenger. I, I can't remember what it is. Yeah, I think it's thirty-five money. bucks for for two, twenty for one. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so it's it's a good cause, and you know the money always goes to uh, to a charity, and just go out and support those guys. I would appreciate. Yeah, it. Uh, good cause. Yeah, good cause. Club gives them gives them a club name. It was Grunt and fuck them all, and they <laughs> yeah. uh, both were both were renegade nice. pigs, brother renegade pigs, and they're in forever chapter now. So yeah. awesome, awesome, good stuff. I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you remember bringing that up. We talked about that in a pre podcast meeting. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Again, with that time of the show, uh, a lot. Do, I want to give special thanks out to Sweetwater. A little uh, had some issues with my uh, soundboard, our soundboard, and reached out to them, and uh, they are they have provided us. We paid for it. We don't sponsor the show, but they provide us with all the uh, expert uh, knowledge. Knowledge and support we need. Guys in the right equipment. Finally, guys in the right equipment because we paid a lot of money for wrong stuff they're off with. And they have supported us 100% as customers. And recently had a uh, issue with the soundboard, and they mailed me some parts free of charge. That's nice. good business. That's nice. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. not only do they do uh, podcast, any podcast needs, they, they can do it. You call them up, you talk to an expert, and they, you guys can contest that. The mics you got, they say, hey, this yeah. is what you need, and this is why you need yeah. it, and this, this is how it's going to work. Yep. They, they're in the like guitars, all electrical, all electrical stuff. Uh, and I, I received stuff. Go, go Rod, ahead, did, did, did you catch that? They sent that? slow ride that stuff free of charge. But he didn't he try to get eighty bucks a piece from oh, us? Oh yeah, eighty dollars per thing they sent me, and uh, we need to split that three ways. Yeah, he's got that retirement <laughs> slow mount. Like, really free? Yeah. I mean, like free shipping. That's what I mean. Yeah, free shipping. Free he's ship, working at free freaking shipping. English. Okay. He needs the cash. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you, if every spruce bonds come to the toilet. Toilet paper, you'll find me hanging out there. <laughs> yeah, they only they only let slow uh, stock toilet paper because he's old. So I tell you, really it's, it's, it'll tell you something funny though. And I know I said a prior show we have one uh, one manufacturer of toilet paper that that is labeled on the toilet paper one hundred percent recycled paper. <laughs> oh, great! Fantastic. I don't know about that one. Uh, oh man! I'll all right, guys, it. we want to appreciate it. and a special thanks to our partners at Boone's Bourbon. You drink gotta Boone's drink Bourbon. Boone's Bourbon. <clears throat> Good stuff. You can email yep. us at bourbonandbadgesyahoo.com. You can find us on any listing platform out there. Now on YouTube, you can see what these mugs exactly look like. That's right. And not just the voice. There's pretty faces here, too. Yeah, man. Do you ever, do you ever like listen to a radio show and you think, well, I wonder what that person looks like by the voice. All and the time. They, 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 they look totally different. Yeah, but, I'm, I'm, all the time. but I'm afraid if they do that with us, they'll go back and listen to the radio show. We won't get any hits on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, shot. Yeah, turn it off. Turn it the off. sun, the sun, the sun. <laughs> all right, hound dog. Yeah. What did you always say? Hey, let's drink about it and drink responsibly. Peace out. This has been a Studio Seventy Seven production. Did I do it right, slow? Oh, you done great. You yeah, done right. great. It was all right. You, you can, you can do better. You <laughs> <laughs> oh. You mean it's over? Well, shit.